Did you know that you could actually build your own synthesizer and that it doesn't have to be that complicated? This is what we're going to explore in today's Summer of Synths episode. So give a warm welcome to my friend Floyd. Hi Bo, thanks for having me. Many commercial synthesizers are built around microcontrollers. These are small, inexpensive, and often not very powerful computers. But the plus is that they also don't draw a ton of power. And around the world, there is a lot of hobby developers that are taking advantage of these microcontrollers and developing their own synthesizers. Over on GitHub, for example, there is plenty to choose from. And what's even better is that they're often free to download. And today's guest, Floyd, is somebody who often features these DIY synths. And I just had a ton of questions for him. And he even sent me a little care package with a DIY synth so I could get started with it. <laughs> So Floyd, I think that my first question is, of course, why? Why build your own synthesizer when there's already so many commercially available small synthesizers out there? Yeah, that's a good question. I can think of three possible answers here. First of all, some people do enjoy building things in itself. It's just like a 3D puzzle of kinds. You get 30 parts and you have to assemble them in the correct way, otherwise your project won't work. And the second reason is these synths can be super cheap. The one I send you is only $15 and I think it sounds quite good. And thirdly, and I think that's the most important factor here, building these DIY synths, you inevitably learn something about the way these digital synthesizers are built and what they are made of. You have all those standard components, you have displays, you have encoders, you have analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, resistors, diodes, optocouplers, and many more parts you can build synths with. And at the heart of them, there's always a microcontroller. Or or SBC, single board computer. And it isn't unheard of that a project that once started as a hobby later turned into a commercial product and a full-time job. So speaking about microcontrollers, and this is something I know very little about, there seems to be a ton of them out there on the market and they have different names like Raspberry and uh, Black Pill. So what do these microcontrollers actually do? Microcontrollers, or SBCs, are basically very small computers that don't have sound or graphics cards, but instead they come with a so-called GPIO, which is an abbreviation for General Purpose Input Output. In most cases, that's a row of pins or holes you can solder or connect electrical components to. So a microcontroller is a small computer that runs a software synthesizer that either you or someone else developed, and it runs directly on hardware without an operator system. And on top of that, you can connect your various electronical components, for example this potentiometer here, which can be used as a knob for your synthesizer. The synth you showed in the beginning of this video uses a so-called Black Pill STFM32 CPU, which is worth around $4. There are more advanced microcontrollers or SPCs that are made for building audio devices specifically. For example, there's the Daisy Seed by Electrosmith, which comes with built-in analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters. You have a stereo audio output there. Or there's the Pico ADK, which can read up to 8 potentiometers or knobs, and that one is optimized for digital signal processing. And these are around $20 to $40. And they're at the heart of some really great DIY multi-effect pedals or Eurorack synths. Another very popular board is the Teensy 4.1, which is a mid-range type of CPU. This board is found in, for example, the Dirty Wave M8 or in Microdext. And then there's the high end, which is the Raspberry Pi. This basically is a complete computer. The new Model 5 can easily be used as a replacement for your desktop 
computer. And the Raspberry Pi can be found, for example, in the Korg Wave State or OP6 and its brethren, and in many other commercial products. Okay, I think I understand what the microcontrollers are about now, but what about assembly? I've always found it very daunting to put stuff together myself, especially if it requires soldering. So, how difficult is it? You're right, Bo. Many of these DIY projects require soldering. But there are also some notable projects that can be assembled using a breadboard, which basically is a board full of electrical connectors. The BP synth comes to mind, that's the one in your possession. <laughs> There's a project named Samplebox, which is a chromatic sample player. For these, you need said breadboard, some wires, the single board computer or microcontroller, some potentiometers and an LC display. You can then connect the parts according to the schematics, and then install the firmware and then you can start playing. Because Floyd knows that I'm not that technical and I'm not good with DIY, he sent over a care package with an assembled little DIY synthesizer for me to test out. And the synth he sent over is the BP synth made by Blaine Perkins, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly, and I've linked this project down in the description of the video. And this is what the synth looks like, and from what I can tell, it's basically a breadboard and some microcontrollers on it, and because this is a synth in its rawest form, it doesn't have any controls on it, so you have to use CC values to control various parameters of the synthesizer. Okay, so I've managed to hook up this synthesizer here, so I got the DIN MIDI over here, got the USB-C power, and since Floyd knows that I'm not good with this, he sent some really detailed instructions on, on what to do here. So the sound is actually coming from this little synthesizer here, and that doesn't sound too bad actually. I can change the oscillator. So let's set up filter 7374. So I managed to record some filter changes into the sequencer and some oscillator changes as well. Just a tiny bit of help, or let's be realistic, quite a lot of help from Floyd, I managed to install the firmware. It wasn't that difficult. Just take your microcontroller, you connect it to a computer using USB, press a button, the microcontroller shows up like a hard drive, and then you just drag and drop the file onto it, and it wasn't that complicated. But I am curious, Floyd, where can people actually get the parts for these synths? Most projects come with BOM, or Bill of Materials, that list all the parts and where you can get them. Without advertising too much, your best bet is a certain Chinese online store. They usually have the best prices. Okay, this far into the video, I think we all understand a little bit better how to find, assemble, put together a little DIY synth. But could you give us some example of interesting DIY synths that people could go and check out? Apart from the BP synth, which we already covered here, I'd recommend Minidext, which is like a Yamaha TX816, that's 8 DX7 synthesizers in one box, and it's really easy to build. And 
then there's the so-called headless version of the Dirty Wave Mate or M8, which basically is just a Teensy 4.1 SBC with an audio board attached to it. Again, it's super easy to assemble and it's a relatively cheap way to test the Dirty Wave Mate before buying the actual thing. Microdex, which is a tiny groove box that runs an e-piano, virtual analog synths, two FM synths, a drum computer and a copy of Braids in a very small form factor. And this one also is based on the Teensy 4.1 SPC. Zynthian based on the Raspberry Pi. This is some kind of hardware plugin VST host with built in sequencers that can also be used as an audio looper, synthesizer, clip player, effects pedal, and much more. Its latest version 5 looks very nice indeed and certainly can be used to produce complete tracks. Again, the DIY version isn't that hard to build and has the same functionality as the ready-made box they sell. And relatively rare, but definitely worth mentioning, are single board computers based on Intel processors. For example, the Latte Panda Moo. These are very tiny personal computers that can run Windows or Linux, allowing you to install your favorite commercial synth plugins and then building your own hardware around them. Another thing that I'm curious about is you found all of these DIY projects. How does one find interesting projects to check out? Well, uh, word of mouth is a great source actually. And other than that, um, just Google it or keep your eyes open in synthesizer forums. And once you start searching for these, then social media pages will automatically start suggesting these projects to you. I think that another question people might have is, what if you find a DIY synth you really like, but you don't want to go through the process of assembling it? Can you buy them assembled? Well, some developers have batches of readily assembled synthesizers for sale on their web pages, join their Discord or social media groups and ask there. One place you can find readily assembled synthesizers, for example, is Etsy, sometimes even eBay. And there are certain Chinese PCB manufacturers, they run creator programs and you can buy readily assembled boards there and then the creator gets a share of the money. Some synths come with their own printed circuit boards or PCBs. And if you want to buy these, it's a good idea to gather a group of four or five people and then place a batch order, because there's always a minimum number of boards you have to buy in order to make the business viable for the circuit printing companies. Now what if you have a great idea for a hardware synth and you want to build it? Where do you actually begin? How to start? 
Well, in that case, you have to prepare to learn a programming language, most likely C++ or Python. I think starting out on a Raspberry Pi isn't the worst idea here because of its big community and the wide support of all kinds of external hardware. There are beginner's kits you can buy that are boxes full of encoders, potentiometers, LEDs and so on. And they usually come with some great programming tutorials that are really easy to understand. For example, when I started, it took me roughly half an hour to come up with my first own MIDI controller. I think we'll just link some of these kids down in this video's description. Thank you so much, Floyd, for this introduction to DIY Synth. Now, if you were to recommend one DIY Synth for my viewers to go and check out, which one would you recommend? Well, I think one can't go wrong with the BP synth because it's relatively easy to build and cheap. My personal favorites at the moment are Zynthian and Microdex because those are quite complex groove boxes that can do a lot and they really pack the power for the price. And there's really nothing comparable on the market, be it commercial or open source. So that was an introduction to DIY synths, something I know very little about, but now I know quite a bit more. So a big thank you to Floyd, go and check him out, I've linked his channel down in the description. And a big thank you to you who watch the channel and support Summer of Synths. So make sure you comment down below if you have any other suggestions for future guests on Summer of Synths. And as always, have a great day, talk to you later.